If you're afraid of heights, viewer discretion is advised. If not, a view of the downtown Los Angeles skyline from 70 stories high is something to see. Los Angeles skyscrapers were sort of a late arrival to urban development compared to cities like New York, Chicago, Miami, or Houston. However, today, LA has more towers being built than any other city in the country. There's well over a hundred projects either under construction or about to be constructed in downtown Los Angeles. There's probably about 40 cranes in the sky right now as we speak constructing buildings. Hal Bastian has been working with LA developers on downtown real estate projects for 25 years. He is part of the downtown Los Angeles revitalization project. There's a reason that downtown Los Angeles wasn't a high-rise city like New York City. One was land economics. We had nothing but land. We were on a little island called Manhattan. Another was cultural. People came from the east. They didn't want to have that kind of density. And the third reason that we didn't have really tall buildings until recently in the last 30 years is because we have big earthquakes every once in a while. The last major earthquake in Los Angeles County was the 6.7 Northridge quake in 1994. 57 people died, 9,000 were injured, and thousands of buildings were either damaged or destroyed at a total cost of over $40 billion. Northridge is part of the San Fernando Valley, about 25 miles from downtown LA. In Southern California, we have about half of the nation's total earthquake risk. So a lot of that, when we talk about it, is the complex system of faults, not just the San Andreas Fault, which is the most active fault in California, but also many hundreds of other faults, some of which are underneath LA and surrounding the downtown area. So we have a complex mixture of hazard here in LA. Hudnut explains that LA is overdue for a tumbler, one that could be deadly and could certainly shut down transportation, communication and utilities for days or weeks. The San Andreas is about 30 miles away, but we have other faults close in. So a smaller magnitude earthquake on one of these faults close to the downtown area could also create a problem. Standing here amongst the clouds on one of Los Angeles's tallest skyscrapers and then peering over the edge is probably gonna make anyone very nervous. However, it's interesting to note that most of the structural engineers and real estate developers we spoke with actually claim this is one of the safest places to be in the event a major earthquake were to hit LA. So when the big earthquake comes, and it will, I would like to be in one of these high-rise buildings because they're engineered for it. Much safer than being on the street where things will be falling down and around you. So the big leading question is, are these buildings safe that we're building? And the answer is, life is risky, but these buildings are as safe as they can be for living in an earthquake region. To really learn how these skyscrapers are earthquake safe when they're sitting so high above ground, you first have to travel far below ground so you could see the technology of LA's seismic resiliency. Follow me. This dark dungeon is actually a basement in one of the buildings in Los Angeles. It's an example of the inner workings from beneath the earth that you'd find in some of the giant towers. This is a glimpse of the future. We're beneath the building that is specially designed to withstand a major earthquake. This is the underground of the Emergency Management Operations Center for the city of LA. USGS seismologists say this structure is considered the safest building in all of Los Angeles in the event of a quake. It uses cutting edge technology seen in many of Japan's tallest towers, particularly Tokyo, which is earthquake prone like LA. Currently, just a few buildings in Los Angeles house this innovative science. What you have here, you're seeing an example of some of the systems that can be used in these buildings. This is a, a friction pendulum based isolation system. What this does is you see it's tied to the building, but also these pillars go 30 to 40 feet to the bedrock. So when the ground shaking starts, when the earthquake develops, these are gonna cause some movement. What it does is it absorbs that movement and it allows this building to maintain its integrity. So basically there's uh, uh, bearings and pendulums inside of this that when you have that ground shaking, it actually absorbs that. Remember, we do have different faults in Los Angeles. So you could get a lateral type movement, which this isolator can handle, but we also have vertical movements. And we do have different isolators that you can notice here, which would handle that type of movement as well. Picture a vehicle. 
you're driving on a rough road, right? You really don't feel that too much because the shock absorbers and picture a skyscraper, the same thing. Ibsen says this is kind of like a floating building suspended in air. Nothing makes contact with the ground. You're looking at the plumbing is suspended. The heating and air system is suspended. The stairwell is suspended. The electrical cabling is suspended. You're going to see that in these large skyscrapers. Everything will be suspended and not, there's no attachment to the ground at all. I'm just amazed by what the structural engineers are able to do, learning from the global experience of earthquakes all over the world and making buildings better and better, advancing the code, learning from the experience of one earthquake after another, what kinds of things can go wrong, what have gone wrong in earthquakes all around the world, and building that into improved codes to improve our seismic safety. Can buildings be too tall in earthquake-prone Los Angeles? You know, I don't think we're ever going to build a building that is quote unquote too tall for the city of Los Angeles or downtown Los Angeles. What we're working to do is to get people out of their cars, living in density, living in a city, and living in a safe high rise building. Are they safe? Yes. The bottom line is in every area of the country, there are hazards, whether it's a hurricane uh, in Florida or Texas, whether it's tornadoes uh, in Kansas, or uh, if there are floods along the Mississippi, and there's earthquakes here. I will tell you that it's a risk uh, living anywhere, and I'll take my risk of a big earthquake every 20, 25 years over any of those other hazards.